All right, now some of you may have heard or read about the cave inside the Hill Camorra. Well, it's actually not a cave, but an ancient man-made room inside the hill. But first I want to share some things about the Hill Camorra that some of you may not know. So, this is the Hill Camorra near Palmyra, New York. It is the one and only Hill Camorra. Some people think it's down in Mexico or Guatemala somewhere, but no prophet or apostle has ever said that. And you'll find the same kind of stone structures and artifacts of Central America all over Southeast Asia among ancient Hindu and Buddhist sites. In fact, the words Maya and Guatemala are Hindu and Buddhist words, but that's all for another video. Anyway, I've been to the Hill Camorra twice so far. It's the place where the last major battle described in the Book of Mormon happened at about 385 AD. A small group of Jews sailed to ancient America around 590 BC and split into two groups called Nephites and Lamanites after two brothers, Nephi and Laman, and eventually became large nations. Over the next thousand years, each group went back and forth in their devotion to God. Sometimes they fought each other, and sometimes they were friendly to each other. But the Nephites eventually became such an evil and murderous people that God allowed for them to be destroyed in war by the Lamanites. And again, the last major battle was at the Hill Camorra at about 385 AD. After the battle, a few Nephites escaped to the south, but the Lamanites eventually caught up with them and killed them as well. Moroni the last Nephite prophet, who was a good man like his father Mormon, then buried a record of the Nephites, not in the room in the hill Cumorah, but just under the surface of the hill. And there the record sat hidden for 1,400 years, until God told Moroni, who was then an angel, to show it to a 17-year-old boy named Joseph Smith, who then translated it with God's help. That's where the Book of Mormon comes from, and it was published in 1830. The ancient Hopewell Mound Builder civilization of North America matches up with the Nephite civilization of the Book of Mormon in so many ways that I can't explain it in this video, but I've got more detailed videos about them, which I'll leave a link to in the description box below. Now, some archaeologists in different states of the U.S. disagree about when the Hopewell Mound Builders began. But when you put all the information together, you'll find that that's because the Hopewell migrated and expanded and were in certain areas earlier than other areas. But the earliest area is in the Florida, Georgia area, estimated to the late 500s BC, which is also where some Iroquois tribes say that some of their ancestors arrived in boats from the Atlantic Ocean. However, most archaeologists are in agreement that the Hopewell Mound Builder civilization ended in New York around approximately 400 AD. The Book of Mormon tells us that the battle at the Hill Camorra happened at about 385 AD. Various Native American tribes speak about the ancient pale-faced mound builders, but they have other names for them. Hopewell is an American name, after a man named Mordecai Hopewell, who allowed an excavation to be done on his property in the late 1800s. Now I go more into detail in part 6 of the video playlist below, as well as give plenty of non-LDS sources, but the Delaware tribe speak about a great war that began with an attack from the Hopewell Mound Builders at the Mississippi River. Eventually, the Delaware and other tribes joined forces to destroy the Mound Builders. They drove them further and further east until they killed most of them off in New York. And western New York itself is full of hundreds of Hopewell Mound Builder forts, some of which you can read about and see their survey drawings in a book called Antiquities of New York by Ephraim G. Squire in 1851. In fact, the Palmyra Temple of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, which is just a few minutes away from the Hill Camorra, stands right inside one of these ancient Hopewell forts, and you can go walk around it for yourself. But I'll have to talk more about that in another video, too. Another interesting fact is that various native tribes say that after the Hopewell mound builders were mostly destroyed in New York, 
that the rest of them escaped southwest down the Ohio River and that the tribes caught up with them at the falls of the Ohio near Louisville, Kentucky, and killed the rest of them off there. This war and annihilation line up with the last war in the Book of Mormon and the annihilation of the Nephites, and non-LDS archaeology and Native American history confirms it. And again, I give more details and lots of non-LDS sources in part 6 of the video playlist below, and that's just scratching the surface. Okay, now the part that you've all been waiting for, the cave or the room inside the Hill Cumorah. There are quite a few secondhand accounts saying that the prophet Joseph Smith and Oliver Cowdery went inside a cave in the Hill Cumorah and saw many more ancient records on metal plates, the Sword of Laban, and other artifacts. What you see here is an account that the prophet Brigham Young told the church in Utah in 1877, not long before he died. Now there are at least 10 accounts of this cave, but none that I know of directly from Joseph or Oliver. There are people who say that the cave doesn't exist because the Hill Cumorah is a drumlin hill which doesn't have the rocky stability to support a cave. And when the word cave is used, I would have to agree with them. But like I said, it's not actually a cave at all. It's an ancient man-made room inside the hill, and it does exist, and there are photos of the opening that leads down into the room, and through that opening you can see some of the stone wall. It's really cool. Here are a couple of places where you can go see the photos for yourself. So the way that this ancient room was discovered was that about 15 years ago, there were some videographers for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints who were sent out there to film some B-roll at the Hill Cumorah. Their families came with them, and so while they were filming, their kids were playing all over the hill, and a little boy went missing. What happened was that the boy had fallen into a hole, and that's where they found him. And one of the videographers is the person who took pictures of the hole. They got him out and he was fine, but after they got him out, nobody dared to go back in and explore. Now when they were getting the boy out, they said there was about a 15 foot drop down into the room, and that the room had four walls made of stone. But from what they could see, the room looked empty. And in a minute, I'll explain why I think it was empty. Anyway, after they rescued the boy, the physical facilities crew came along and put this big metal plate over the hole, then covered it with dirt and planted some shrubs over it. So some of you might be thinking, well, why doesn't the church publicize this? I don't know. My guess is that because the Hill Cumorah is a very sacred place, the last thing the church wants to do is destroy it with an archaeological dig. And because it's open to the public, if the church kept the hole open, that just opens up the room to vandalism and people getting hurt going in and out of there, or the room possibly collapsing while people are in there. It's just a bad idea all around. Anyway, so why was the room empty? Here's my thoughts on it. David Whitmer was one of the three witnesses whom God allowed to see the ancient metal plates that the Book of Mormon was translated from and the angel Moroni, who had given the plates to Joseph Smith at age 21. All three of these witnesses testified that they saw the plates, the angel, and heard the voice of God. A few years later, all three witnesses started believing that Joseph Smith had become a fallen prophet, and they all left the church. David Whitmer even helped lead the Missouri militia to far west to force the church out of Missouri or be killed. And some people like to say, oh, well, that's just more proof that the Book of Mormon's a hoax and that Joseph Smith's a fraud. But actually, it's more proof that it's all real. Because despite their problems with Joseph and the church, even to the end of their lives, all three of them stood by their testimony that they had seen the plates, the angel, and heard the voice of God. If it was a hoax, they would have denounced their testimonies after leaving the church. But they never did. In fact, Oliver Cowdery and Martin Harris rejoined the church. But back to David Whitmer. He never did come back to the church, but he was interviewed a few times in the 1870s. In an interview with Edward Stevenson, he talked about how Joseph and Oliver went into a room in the Hill Cumorah where all the artifacts were, but that no Rochester adventurer would ever find them. 
In another interview with Wilhelm Polson, he said that the plates were no longer in the Hill Cumorah, but were hidden in a cave not far from there. So, there are actually two caves. One is the man-made room inside the Hill Cumorah, and the other isn't far from the Hill Cumorah. Is the other one a cave or another man-made room? I don't know. But if you remember in the Book of Mormon, it does talk about two different repositories in two different hills for all of the Nephite records, and how the Prophet Mormon took all of them out of the hill Shim before the land of Antum was taken over by the Lamanites, and then he moved them to the land of Cumorah and put them in the hill Cumorah. And in the quote from Brigham Young that I showed earlier, he mentioned how there were enough artifacts in the room to fill many wagon loads. Now, Brigham wasn't a member of the church during the New York era, but he heard the story from Oliver. So what if, before the church was driven out of New York, Joseph and others emptied out the room in the Hill Cumorah onto wagons in the middle of the night and moved them to wherever the Hill Shim was? Could that be why Brigham said many wagon loads? Could that be why David said they were in another cave and that no Rochester adventurer would ever find them? Could that be why the room that the boy fell into was empty? Just some things to think about. One last thing that I find very interesting. In the 1820s, during the buzz about the gold plates in the Hill Cumorah, people tried searching all over the hill for treasure and never found anything. And again, David said no Rochester adventurer ever would. If God wants to keep something hidden, he'll keep it hidden until he wants it found. So I find it really interesting that God allowed a child to accidentally discover the room in the Hill Cumorah. Not a man who was looking for treasure, but a child who was just playing in the woods. I think that's really cool.